Julian here. I'm sitting with Simon, who recently finished a three-day darkroom retreat here on Koh Phangan in southern Thailand. We're just here to talk a little bit about some of his experiences in the dome, things he found beneficial, transformative, possibly challenging as well. Simon, thank you so much for coming up here and sharing with us. What kind of practice did you do in there? Um, I did regular Hatha Yoga and Kundalini practice. Um, and I did alternate between uh, Hridaya meditation. I did a lot of Japa as well. First Japa and then off, followed by um, Laya Yoga. I mean, sorry, Hridaya. Or Laya Yoga, but not so much Laya. Can you explain maybe Hridaya for those uh, listeners who, who wouldn't necessarily know what you're talking about? Yeah, breathing into the heart space, just continuously breathing into the spiritual heart and then focusing upon the breath into the heart and yeah, awareness of the heart and developing the fire of the heart. Yeah, witness consciousness. Mm-hmm. In terms of, can you estimate maybe a, a percentage of how much you did more physical practice and how much was more uh, maybe subtle? Say meditation versus yeah. hatha yoga. I would say between hatha yoga and the kundalini practice, I would say it was about the same amount as all of the meditation combined. So fifty-fifty, so yeah, pretty balanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And were there any uh, challenges, difficulties, fears? Uh, what what kind of things came yeah. up there for you? Um, I was quite surprised, actually. Um, there was not so much difficulty. And in fact, um, I was surprised to the level at which I was able to absolutely surrender to the fact that I was in there for three days and there was nothing else to do but practice, actually. Mm. Um, and you know, every time every time my knees got too sore, or I, or I had to move, then I would do I have a yoga practice, or I would stretch. I would do some standing postures, some standing asanas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there was really there really was no difficulty. Um, like I was just really really surprised. You know, I would wake up, and I was a lot less lazy than what I was at home. It would not take me too long after waking up to get into my practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on a on a more subtle level, like mental level, you know, when you're in there, the physicality goes away to some extent. And yeah. okay, if the body is sore, that's certainly something that's holding you back and always reminding you. But if that's not the case, then often people experience, or people may experience, that they feel. Uh, challenges on a on a mental level basically yeah. you're you're in there only with yourself you know there's no distraction whatsoever it's really a time to to face yourself so yeah. did you did you did you perceive that happening at all did you feel you were you know like on uh, mentally like on a mental level in there like mm. i really was really, really surprised as to how well I surrendered to the fact of doing the practice. Mm-hmm. I did have the same stories that were coming up in my mind from time to time that I would have in meditation outside of the dome. Yeah. You know, I did have these same stories coming and going, but not more, not less. There was no, there was no, certainly no mental anxiety about being in there or, um, there were certainly no fears, mm-hmm. and in fact, there was a lot of comfort. I was really comfortable to be there. Yes. Um, away from, you know, it didn't take me too long. Like, it must have been some point towards the end of the first day, I really could really realize that my body, my my being was really, really was enjoying being immersed in the darkness. I could yes. really feel, I don't know how to say, but... 
you know, extremely comfortable for being Maybe there. warmth, you know, or uh, you've... Yeah, like very often, nurturing, you know. Yes, exactly. Often people would imagine maybe that it's dark and cold, mm. but it may very well turn out to be the opposite. It's certainly not cold. Yes, no. yes. And what, what kind of intentions did you take with you, you know, when you started? What what were your maybe hopes or also what what kind of what were you asking for or what were you what were you after, so to speak? Yeah. Like I really was looking forward to sleeping. Like I did have this presumption that you know, I've been really tired and I have been run down and, you know, the last six months have been quite full on. And I really, really, really was in enjoying the possibility that maybe, you know, I'm going to sleep for 18 or 20 hours straight, you know. Mm-hmm. This was something I really was looking forward to on, on that level. Mm-hmm. I don't think that happened. Um, Practice-wise, like, you know, it's the first time going in as we discussed, so... I didn't have too many expectations. I was not too certain about what, how I would react. Um, I didn't know if I would want to leave. I didn't. I had no idea about what I was going in for, basically, you know. Um, and of course, at first, I did have the intentions to um, to do more meditation. Um, perhaps if there was a chair, if I had have taken a chair inside, then I would yes. have been able. To really been able to do a lot more meditation Mm. and, you know, to move away from, as we discussed earlier, about the move away from the physical body and go more into the, however it was what it was. Um, I was just curious as to what would happen. Of course, I, you know, into the astral world, I was very, very curious about if I would perceive something perhaps or different colours. Yes. Um... You know, I was very curious about what would happen about being in the dark, you know. Yes. Um, and things happen. What, what did... <laughs> yeah, that's one of my questions, you know. Did you did you perceive yeah. an enhancement of uh, clairsentience, like either clairaudience or clairvision or just uh, an altered perception? Did, did that start to... Clairsentience is the ability to perceive... Well, it could be any of the senses. That's why clair, okay, clairsentience yeah. is like the family of the clairaudience okay. and the clairvision. And so and for some people, it'll be more visual. For other people, it might be more auditive. But just, you know, yeah, non, I mean, beyond the physical senses, basically. Did you did you feel an expansion? Or? I mean, absolutely. During particularly like the Kundalini practice from times, I could really perceive the body's... You know, in the aura outside of my physical body, I could really perceive the energy rising up through through the aura, through the outer bodies. Yes. And um, I could almost, you know, see. Yes. Um, the energy as it rose. Mm-hmm. And on a few occasions, I had very strong rising of Kundalini through Ajna Chakra. And in this time, like with the explosion of the energy through Ajna. Like just intense gold, everything just absolutely golden in color. Yes. Still with the same photons or whatever these little phosphenes phosphenes are that you yeah. can see in there anyway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, behind these phosphenes was this incredible gold, golden light. It was very very beautiful. Mm. And yes, um, for instance, like brushing my teeth or rinsing my mouth or on the toilet or whatnot, there's always the perception that it's like a moonlight. It's like there's light coming from behind you mm. onto the wall. Mm. And you can see, I could see the wall um, very clearly from time to time, not consistently, but there would be moments where for maybe minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes and it would come and go. But yeah, I could sit down and I could make out the shape of the dome. Right. I could see the walls. I could see where it rounded. I could see the... The bags. The bags. I could see the sandbags. Uh-huh. A couple of times I could actually see the sandbags as if... Earth bags. The, the earth bags, thanks. Yeah. Like the the brick-shaped layer. Like it was right. like... You can't see it perfectly like I can now, but yes. you can certainly see... 
there is a something happening there. Like. Yeah, and it's building up. Uh, yeah, it would have gotten more clear towards the end, right? Absolutely, and yeah. yeah, I mean, and there's always this light, particularly in the very peripheral vision. There's always seems to be a very, very gentle moonlight. There was for me, like a. Mm-hmm. And, you know, quite bright, but, of course, as soon as you turn to look, there's nothing there. Yes. You know, it's, there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. And on other levels, too, maybe sometimes, on maybe two occasions, I could perceive something else as well. So I don't know whether or not you say something else is enhanced. Maybe a noise or a presence or something. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that was just the mind, too. I don't know. But, yeah. You mean like an entity? Possibly, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Did did you invoke entities like no. maybe your guardian angel or? Well, something? yeah, I I did communicate with angels and, and guides as well. Um, I only really really thought to do this towards the end, though, possibly in the last thirty six hours, possibly mm-hmm. in the last day or however long. I don't know, but yes, yeah, it's something I would have. Well, in future, I would choose to do with a lot more early. Yes. And, um, yeah, in relation to the light, I think if you stayed another, you know, if you stayed for five days or for seven days, I think, well, that would be something to perceive something in complete darkness then in relation to what you can see in the absolute darkness of the dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What about your dreams? Did you, uh, was that extraordinary in any way? No. No? Um, I had shitty dreams. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's stuff associated with my past, you know, debauched lifestyle, antics that I was up to a number of years ago, you know, I was, yeah, it was interesting and disappointed. I was sort of hoping to have some major revelation in my dreams, but <laughs> it didn't come. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that was it, you know? Yeah, possibly, huh? What do you feel would have been your most uh, profound insight? There was one. Yeah, like, I mean, I use the word I, not we, I. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the same insight has come before, of course, but it's coming all, always at different levels of understanding and, and different levels of insight. But, you know, to be absolutely certain to be on the right path toward spiritual practice. You know, you know this has come clearly many, many times, but, you know, the... Pers- the Reassurance. Absolutely, yeah. This mm. was very strong. And, yeah, a certain level of guidance and, um, and support. Aspiration. Yeah, abs- and asp- absolutely aspiration. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Very, yes. very much so. Mm-hmm. And then uh, coming out, coming back... To daylight, was that difficult in any way? Do you feel like now um, there are about 24 hours since you've stopped, since yep. you've left the dome? You said you have a bit of a headache, but otherwise you feel pretty much yeah. operational, manageable. You yeah. feel good. <clears throat> Very operational. Yeah. And, you know, I feel great. Um, I have had a headache, a slight headache for most of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I woke up very early again this morning and was, you know, very awake. I felt great. Um, I'm, all day today, I've been extremely present and very relaxed and very content. Yes. Um, yeah, I haven't wanted to. I had to have a lunch with a number of people before, and it was too much. Too much noise. It was, it was a bit much. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, very clear. Yeah, mm. very, very clear. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, no, it's been good. Thank you for sharing, Simon. Pleasure. It's Thank been you, great yeah. talking to you. Yeah. Thank you.